Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about PPP multilink. And quite simply, multilink is just another way to say load balancing. So, so far we've looked at OSPF and EIGRP and how they can balance traffic to a single destination over multiple paths. And since those are layer 3 routing protocols, all of the load balancing occurred at layer 3 of the OSI model. Well, PPP can perform load balancing as well via multilink. And the difference here is that since PPP, point to point protocol, is a layer 2 protocol on the OSI model, the load balancing is performed there at layer 2 of the OSI model instead of layer 3 like OSPF and EIGRP. Okay, so let's take a look at how this actually works. Okay, by now you already know what load balancing is. But in case you need a refresher, it is simply utilizing multiple paths to a single destination, and you're using them simultaneously. Now there are two points I want you to walk away with about multilink. The first one is, once you enable multilink, your layer 3 protocols will see a single connection as opposed to multiple connections. So for instance, here we have two serial connections between routers A and B. Now if OSPF or EIGRP are running on these routers, without multilink, they'll see both of the connections. And they might load balance over both of them if the costs are, are appropriate, or they may prefer one link over the other. However, when we enable multilink, our routers only see a single connection. So those two circuits, when they're configured with multilink, now become one circuit in the eyes of a layer 3 routing protocol like OSPF or EIGRP. And that brings us to our second point about multilink, and that is how it actually works. So let's say OSPF has decided that the best path to a destination is via the multilink connection to router B. So the way PPP multilink works is it's going to take the layer 3 packet and it's going to divide it up into multiple equal size frames. Then those frames are going to be equally distributed over all of the links in the bundle. So we only have two links in our bundle and we're just showing you two frames here but it could be actually many more than just two. But to keep it simple once we have our two smaller frames that came from our original packet, PPP Multilink is going to send those frames and use both circuits in the Multilink at the same time. So we're achieving a very good load balancing. Half of the frames go on one circuit, the other half of the frames go on the second circuit. And we're doing that at the same time. And we've also doubled our bandwidth between the two routers. Instead of one serial connection, we're using both. Finally, with PPP Multilink, we also reduce the size of our routing tables because now OSPF and EIGRP are only looking at one connection as opposed to two. So there's less information in their topological databases. Okay? Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that load balancing occurs at layer two of the OSI model when we enable PPP Multilink. And when we do that, our layer 3 routing protocols see all of the links in that connection, the PPP multilink, as just a single connection. Now, the load balancing itself actually occurs by taking packets and dividing them up into smaller frames, and then they are equally distributed across all of the links in the multilink. Now, don't worry, don't worry about having to configure PPP Multilink. At this stage in your studies for the CCNA exam, you don't have to know the actual configuration commands. Okay, so just be familiar with the theory of how it works. Okay, and so that's it. That's PPP Multilink. Thanks for watching.